What if I told you 5% of carbon emissions come from this? The way we move, treat, and use water contributes a surprising amount of carbon into the atmosphere, in part because of the inefficient way we do things like heat water. So this is a heating element from a typical water heater. And the way these things work is they get really hot and they transfer the heat to the water. So the water is boiling off. Well, the, when you boil it off, the minerals have to go somewhere so they get fused or plated or scaled out of this heating element. And you only need about a millimeter or so of scale to lose about 50% of the heating efficiency. Well, what if we could heat water without a heating element? This guy, Jerry, has invented a way to do that. He calls it the omic array. If every home in the United States transitioned to this technology, that would shut down the 12 of the largest coal-fired power plants in the U.S. So the technology to do this better exists, but getting people on board is a whole different challenge. What is that gonna take? This is Make It Count, a series on environmental innovations and the math it takes to bring them to the masses. You know how when you're heating water to make pasta, it takes a while for it to come to a boil? Watch this. One, two, three. And there you have it. It's that fast. And regular heating elements, regular technology would take 45 seconds or a minute. How quickly we can heat water might seem trivial, but how energy transforms from one form to another, like kinetic energy into heat, or electricity into photons, these transition points are when we lose a lot of efficiency. In the water heating industry, the old technology is still the new technology. It's the same as it was since Ohm invented it in 1851. So this gets really hot, transfer the heat to the water, like your toaster wire, takes a while to heat up, takes a while to cool down. What we do is we actually use graphite plates, and they're not heating elements that get hot, transfer the heat to the water, they're just electrical conductors. So we have multiple pairs of these things that sit in the water and we pass controlled electrical currents through it. And so our temperature control is so good that nothing in the whole system gets any hotter than the temperature that you want. So if you don't boil the water, you don't create the scaling problem. The way the Omic Array technology heats water is unique, but it's not the only tankless water heater on the market. In fact, all tankless or on-demand water heaters save energy and water. Up to 2,100 gallons of water every year on average because you're only heating the water you need to use. But if tankless water heaters are so much better than their predecessors, why aren't they ubiquitous? The challenge is the installation part of it. So for homeowners with an existing electric water heater, there are costs related to removing the old one, installing the new one, and then connecting it to a new electric power source. Even though they're more efficient, these tankless water heaters have a huge power requirement when they're running up to around 100 amps. Most homes have around 100 to 200 amps coming in total. In new construction, it's easy to run thicker wire and to put a larger circuit breaker in the panel. It's, it's not a challenge at all. But it's more of a challenge in retrofit. So for many homeowners, this would mean rewiring, retrofitting, installing new subpanels, paying a technician to do this. You get the idea. But in most places, you get your money back and get a payback of like less than five years with the Model 3 just by installing it. The average house spends about four to $600 a year on water heating. Systems like Jerry's would save up to 40% on heating costs. That's about $200 a year. Over five years, that covers the cost of the unit and starts to pay off installation costs. So we're trying to make it easier for people to do the right thing for the environment. Even though the economics of these systems can make sense over the long term, the cost is more than just your money. It's your time and effort. And that's where consumer inertia comes into play. It's new technology versus old technology, right? It's difficult to get homeowners to change the technology that they're used to, especially in staid devices like water heaters, because they think of it as a utility, open the faucet, hot water comes out. So there's an education process to get them to understand that there's a better, cheaper, faster, cooler way to do it. There are other environmentally friendly ways to heat water, including solar and geothermal options that are also increasing in affordability. Innovations like these mean that the next time we need to install a new water heater, the more efficient option might also be the more affordable option, which would incentivize the adoption of these technologies on a global scale. Technology is advancing so quickly and there are so many 
incredible opportunities that people have to save water and energy in the environment. And they're just becoming more and more prevalent and I'm just excited to be a small part of that trend. It's really invigorating for me.